Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Moreover, brethren, this is speaking to Christians. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which all, uh, ye have also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. By which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received. This is first in terms of not time, but importance. This is extremely important. Well, you, you need to understand this message concerning our Lord Jesus Christ. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. So first up, we've got to understand that we are sinners in the sight of God. You and I are sinners in the sight of the Lord, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is not a just man upon the earth that doeth good and sinneth not. So Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to to the scriptures. This is the third thing. We have Christ died for our sins. He was buried, number two. Number three, he rose again from among the dead, exactly as he said he would, time and time again unto the disciples that, that they didn't get it. They didn't understand what he was speaking about. Remember he said at one stage, destroy this temple. And in three days I will raise him up again, this bakey of his body. So that once he was crucified and buried, he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, showing his victory over sin, death, hell and the devil. The Lord Jesus Christ is the victor over all of these things. So we need to understand first up that we are sinners and that's why Christ died. Christ died for the ungodly. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. You and I have to realize, as I've said, the first point is this, that we realize that yes, I am a sinner. Why go to a doctor when you're not sick? You and I have a, a sinful disease, it's called sin. It's worse than any cancer or, or even a corona virus. It's worse than any of these things. Why? Because it's taking us down to hell and God does not want you to end up in hell and eventually be cast into the lake of fine brimstone where there's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. God does not want that for you. And that's why he sent his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, into the world, down from heaven. Because the Lord the Lord Jesus Christ is the eternal self-existent one. He was there in eternity past, and yet he took upon himself a body, that in that body he by the grace of God should taste death for every man. As we've seen, Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to to the scriptures, which means that you and I can be saved. You and I can have our sins forgiven through faith alone in the Lord Jesus Christ. If we die without Christ, we'll be in hell. Do you realize the great danger that you're in without Christ, outside of Christ? And no, we're not children of God when we're born into this world. Contrary to the thought of many people, we need to be born again into God's family through faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Moving on now, um, verse 4 of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, uh, verse 5, sorry, and that he was seen of uh, Cephas, then of the twelve. After that he was seen of above 500 brethren at once. In other words, he was seen of over 500 Christians in one hit, after he had risen from among the dead. That is absolute proof that yes, he died, he was crucified, he shed his precious blood, but the third day he rose again according to the scriptures. It's absolutely set in concrete. 
that this man, the Lord Jesus Christ, can be your saviour today. And that's why I'm here. I want you to know that your sins can be forgiven. And this is why I come and preach unto you, realising that he's the only way of salvation. Acts 4.12 says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Goes on to say, of whom the greater part, that's of, above those fi of the 500 people that saw him after he was resurrected, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some have fallen asleep. In other words, some have died. And that's a lovely term that the Lord uses for those who are Christians, those who are believers, but they've fallen asleep. This is not soul sleep. It's asleep in the sense of their body is waiting for the time when the Lord Jesus Christ comes down into the air to take us to be forever with himself, that is the believers, the Christians. I wonder, will you be left behind to go through the seven year tribulation upon this earth? Terrible time of judgment upon this earth, especially the last three and a half years. There's no need to be left behind. You can be caught up to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. After this he was seen of James, then of all the apostles, and last of all he was seen of me also. And this is uh, 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 John speaking, oh, sorry, the apostle Paul speaking, of me also as of one born out of due time. For I am the least of the apostles that am not meet or not fit to be called an apostle. Because, here's the reason, because I persecuted the church of God. He was a man and his name is Saul of Tarsus. And he's traveling on the road to Damascus, or on the Damascus road. And he comes across the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ appeared unto him. And he said, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? He was a man that was persecuting the Christians. He was against the Christians. He was holding them to be uh, put into prison and to death. He was a persecutor of the believers, the Christians. And now he has gotten saved. He met the Lord Jesus Christ on the Damascus Road and became a Christian. He was born again into God's family through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. The one who, is, who he was persecuting appeared unto him and spoke to him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? Well, he said, first of all, he said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. And that's why he said, that's why Paul could say, I'm the chief of sinners. He said that, I am the chief of sinners. And if the chief of sinners can be saved, you and I can be saved. You know, there are degrees of sinfulness, obviously. Someone who goes out and just cold blood murders someone, they're obviously a worse sinner, that's a worse crime, than someone who steals a pencil from work or something. There are degrees of sin. But the fact remains, we've all sinned. And this is the problem. We need forgiveness for those sins. Whether they're big sins or little sins, those sins are taking us down to hell. Now we need to understand the danger that we're in. Otherwise we won't, we won't reach out to the Lord Jesus Christ to become a child of God and to be born again into God's family through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That's a very simple situation we have here. We don't have to do any big great works to impress God in any way. We can't impress God. All our righteousnesses are as filthy rags in His sight. As far as He's concerned, they're absolutely useless. You know, many people in this world think they can get to heaven by being good. By doing more good works than bad works. But this won't work. It will never ever work. It's not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his grace and mercy he has saved us, that is, those of us who are saved. Are you saved today? Are you going to heaven? 
Are you still on your board, on the broad road that leads down to hell and destruction? You don't need to go there. And God does not want you to go there. But we will go there if we die without Christ. And I'm here to tell you, the only way of salvation is through our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. So we need to see here, our, first of all, we have a need of salvation. We're sinners. We're going down to hell. We're facing the judgment of God. God does not want to have to judge you, but he will if you die without Christ as your Saviour. So this man, as I said, Saul of Tarsus, he became Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, and he's writing to these Corinthian Christians, these uh, believers that were meeting at Corinth, at a place called Corinth, and he's writing unto them and saying that, For I delivered unto you first of all, that which I received, how that Christ died for our sins, I said earlier, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. This is of most importance, utmost importance, that you get right with God, that your soul is saved. If we're not saved, we'll remain in a lost condition, going down to hell into the judgment of God. Why? Because our sins have not been forgiven. I want to have your sins been forgiven. You and I have to realize our sinful condition that we're in. And uh, he says here, verse 8 of 1 Corinthians 15, and last of all he was seen of me also, as of one born out of due time. For I am the least of the apostles and am not meet or fit to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God as I've related. But by the grace of God I am what I am. And his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain, but I laboured more abundantly than them all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Uh, therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preach, and so ye believed. I wonder, have you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ for your eternal salvation? This is so critical. If we do not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ at the moment of death, we'll be in hell. I'm here to warn you again today to flee from the wrath which is to come. God is angry with the wicked, that is, those who are not saved every day. And yet he wants you to be in heaven. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him, in the Lord Jesus Christ, should not perish, but have everlasting life. Do you have that everlasting life that can only come through faith in our Lord Jesus Christ? Now, if Christ be preached that he rose again from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? Maybe that's you. You think when you die, you just die like a dog and you finish, you're done. Wrong. We have a spirit and soul that goes out into eternity and our bodies will be resurrected. The just and also the unjust. Our bodies will be reunited with our spirit and our soul. But at the moment of death, if you're not saved, you remain in that condition and die in that condition, your spirit and soul, your soul will go down to hell. And you'll be in torment, in torture, in the flames of hell, if you do not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. It's either believe or else. There's no middle ground here. There's no sitting on the fence. You're either a believer or an unbeliever. You've either experienced the salvation of God or you're unsaved. It's either salvation or damnation. Now what's it going to be for you? You must make up your mind what you will do with the Lord Jesus Christ. And your decision for or against the Lord Jesus Christ determines your eternal destiny. You and I are on a journey out into eternity. But eternity where? Where will you be five seconds after you die? Will it be heaven? Or will it be down in hell because you've rejected or neglected the Lord Jesus Christ who loved you so much that he died upon the cross and shed his precious blood on that cross? 
in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen. And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain and your faith is also vain. Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, that your faith is vain. It's empty, it's useless. Ye are yet in your sins. They, uh, then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ, in other words, believers, who have died, uh, are perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming. Then cometh the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power, for he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death, for he hath put all things under his feet. Uh, but when he said all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted, which did put all things under him. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. Else what shall they do which are baptized for the dead, if the dead rise not at all? Why are they then baptized for the dead? And why stand we in jeopardy every hour? I pers uh, protest by your rejoicing which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord, I die daily. If after the manner of men I have fought with beasts at Ephesus, what advantageth it me? If the dead rise not, let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. What is that your attitude? Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Do you just live for the weekend so you can go out and party and have fun and do what you want to do, when you want to do, with whom you want to do? That's a very dangerous situation to be in. I know it's fun. It's obviously fun and pleasurable. Otherwise, people wouldn't be doing it. But the pleasures of sin are but for a season. These things are like froth and bubble. You know, they're like the uh, potato chips you get in the supermarket. They're just, there's no sustenance in them really. They might taste good, but they just vanish away. It's like fairy floss. They're like froth and bubble. They'll be here now and they'll be gone in five minutes time. You know what I mean? And the things that are seen are temporal. Even our bodies, they're going to, they're going to vanish away. We're going to be buried one day. They're going to bury us, or burn us, whatever the case may be in your situation. But it doesn't matter. God is able to resurrect your body again, whether it's cremated or not. It doesn't matter. I mean, it's not right to be burnt, but God will resurrect you anyway. It doesn't matter to him. He's all-powerful. He can do all those things. But you and I have to realize we are accountable before God. Every one of us shall give account of himself to God. That should be a scary situation. That should be something that makes us fear. Imagine if other people knew what we were thinking at any given time or what sites we've been clicking on on the internet, or whatever porn and whatever we'd be looking at. Imagine if someone else knew that. You know, we'd be horrified, but God knows it. 
Nothing's hidden from the God of heaven. God sees all things. See, God shall judge the secrets of men according to my gospel, by Jesus Christ, according to my gospel, the word of God says. So we need to understand we're in trouble and we're in big trouble because we're in trouble with God. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Awake to righteousness and sin not. For some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. But some man will say, how are the dead raised up and with what body do they come? Therefore, that which thou sowest is not quickened or made alive, except it die. And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be, but bear grain, if, by, if it may chance of wheat or of some other grain. You see, when we bury a seed, we bury a seed in the ground, and then what comes up after is not the seed. It's the fruit of the seed. It might be a plant, it might be a tree, whatever it might be. But it's not the same as what has been buried. And this is what the, uh, the idea is here. It says here, but God giveth it a body as it is, hath pleased him, and to every seed his own body. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial, but the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. For one star differeth from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, was made a quickening spirit or a life-giving spirit. The Lord Jesus Christ wants to give you life. You see, we are dead spiritually as far as God is concerned. We need to be made alive in Christ. We need the new birth. We need to be born again into God's family through faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. How be it, that which, uh, that was not first, which is spiritual, but that which is natural. And after it, that which is spiritual. The first, first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man, that's Adam. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthly, earthy. As is, and as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthly, earthy, this is speaking to Christians, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit in corruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed this is the christians the believers for this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall I put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, 
for as much as ye know that your labour is not in vain in the Lord. Now why am I out here preaching? Because I'm concerned about your soul. Your soul that goes out into eternity and lasts for all eternity. But it's either going to be in one or the other place. It's going to be forever in heaven for all eternity. Or it's going to be down in the lake of fine brimstone where there's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. That's why I'm here. I want you to know that your soul can be saved, you can have a home in heaven, everlasting life, and peace with God, as the Word of God says, through our Lord Jesus Christ, the one who was crucified that day. Remember I said that those, the things that are seen are temporal, and I don't think I've finished the verse, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Our spirit and soul leave our body at the moment of death and they're the things that we cannot see. But they are eternal. We will exist for all eternity. You might not think that. You might think you just die like a dog and you're finished, you're done. Wrong. We have an eternal spirit and soul that goes out into eternity. But where? Where will you be five seconds after you die? Will you be in heaven through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ or will you be down in hell? If you die without Christ, you will be. I can absolutely assure you from the Word of God. Because the Word of God says, He that has the Son of God, he that has the Son hath life, he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Have you believed on him? Have you received him as your Saviour? You need to come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Without that we're doomed, we're damned. We're going down to hell if we die without Christ as our Saviour. He'll either be your Saviour or it has to be your judge. The Word of God reminds us, prepare to meet thy God. It's a beautiful thing to fall into the hands of the living God and yet God will have all men to be saved. It's God's desire. It's God's will that you would be saved. But it doesn't mean you will be saved. You have a part to play in this. You have got to put your faith in Jesus Christ. You've got to come in repentance toward God. That is, a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner. And then put your faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. The Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. That's the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who loved us enough to come down from heaven, from heaven's glory, to die upon the cross for you and for me, so that we could be rescued from going down to hell and the lake of fire for all eternity. Why go there when there's absolutely no need? The Lord Jesus Christ has made the provision for your salvation and mine that we would be saved saved by the grace of God through faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. I wonder what does he mean to you? Your eternal, your eternal well-being of your spirit and your soul and your body depends on what you do with the Lord Jesus Christ. He can be your Saviour today. Will you believe on him? That's the, that's the question. Will you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ or will you remain in your unsaved state, not believing on him, and therefore going down to hell at the moment of death? It's not worth it. God has made the way of escape. For the wages of sin is death. That's the bad news. But we also have the good news in the same verse. And thank the Lord for that. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Are you prepared to come unto him? He said, come unto me, all you that labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. Maybe you're troubled at this particular time of the coronavirus or whatever. Maybe you're concerned about it, you might get it and die. You should be more concerned about 
the sickness you have of sin at this particular point. You need forgiveness for your sins. Without that forgiveness, we're heading down to hell, as I keep on saying. We're going into the judgment of God if we die the same way as we came into this world. Without faith in Jesus Christ. But we do last for all eternity. Our spirit and soul goes out into eternity. I wonder where will you be five seconds after you die? Will you be in heaven? Now the only way you can be in heaven is through faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. I've come to give you good news. Good news concerning the fact, as I read earlier, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. He's a living, loving saviour. He desires to save your soul from a long lost eternity. What will you do then with Jesus, which is called the Christ? Is he your saviour? Will he be your saviour? You can believe on him right now. All you need to do is come in repentance toward God. That is a change of mind. Simply be honest before the God of heaven. Agree with him that you are a sinner. Repentance is a change of mind. And then believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. If you're interested in this, look me up. YouTube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. God bless you. And thanks for listening. Remember, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord, in whom we have redemption through his blood even, the forgiveness of sins.